could spend the next hour just listing all of the achievements of our next guest. A woman of true distinction, she is the first woman to serve as dean of a fine arts college, the first woman to serve as president of a Florida university. Six facilities are named in her honor, and we are just getting warmed up. We want to welcome the legendary former president of Jacksonville University as just one of her many, many titles, Dr. Frances Bartlett Kinney to the chat. It's so good to see you. And thank you. What a great introduction. Oh, anytime. Well, you made it. I didn't make it up. Oh, my goodness. I'm just reading your achievements. And there are so many of them. But I, I guess I, I'm going to put you on the spot right out of the bat. Is there one that you are most proud of, you own the most, and why? I would definitely say my graduates. Uh, that's what, that's why I was there, of course, and that's why I still feel that way. You were there at a very pivotal time as well in right. JU's history. I mean, you yes. really put it on a path of distinction while you were there. Well, they, everybody has been wonderful, and it was a challenge at the beginning, but being a woman, mm -hmm. because there weren't any women in this particular position uh, in Florida and very few in the country but everybody you know it, there's a great quality that you have to have no matter what you're doing and that's persistence mm. absolutely keep after it I well, think you I are also, also easy to get along with. I'm a JU alum so thank you, you for all that you have done for us Agreed. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm proud of you oh well thank you oh, that's very nice now you and I had conversation before the show got started and we've had our little connection and I really admire you for everything that you've done and you look fabulous in your red it's, it's, it's really great on you now you have paved the way for a lot of people were there any challenges that you remember more than others? Uh, let's put it this way, quite, okay. a, quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? How difficult was that? Oh, I think probably the biggest challenges I had um, were when we were overseas mm. because uh, it was after, the war, after World War II. And uh, in the first place, I was an American. Uh, I was uh, not welcomed as I felt that I should be, but I learned a lot, and believe me, I learned a lot. I, I remember going, going home in tears one time because I was trying to register at the university, and uh, at German university, and I was pushed out of line. I, was, I went back many, many, many times, and so finally, I, I went home in tears to my husband, and he said, did you realize that we almost destroyed Frankfurt in one night. I went back with a whole different feeling. And I dressed differently. I, I had a, I remember I had a Buick sports car. I, I parked that two uh, blocks away. Um, I started going in, I'd sit on the floor. We didn't have enough chairs for my, in my philosophy class. I sat with them and they accepted me. It took about a year. Uh, but they accceptedly me. So you realized it wasn't about you personally. No. It was about who you represented. Absolutely. And you became more sympathetic Much. and respectful of their feelings right. and then they in turn did the same for you. And we became friends mm -hmm. and I was the only woman but the, 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 the men accepted me. Well I think I'm seeing a pattern here. You say it's perseverance that has been extremely, that would be your, but I'm also, I think that you could get along with a post. Uh, <laughs> you are easy to get along with. I think I'd listen to just about anything you had to say. But did you realize in the midst of all of this that you were forging new ground for women? Or is, did you just do it because you were called to or you, you knew just to do the next best thing? Or? I just accepted it because my mother did this. Uh, my my mother was into everything. She uh, founded the library in my hometown. They named it after her. Uh, she was uh, the first woman, I think, to vote in that area. And so, it's I a way of life. I really didn't think anything about it. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. I just uh, what an example. Yeah. But I ha <laughs> but I had such fun doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you've you've made so many. You've, uh, I mean, just accomplished so much in your life and many o over the many years. Is there anything that you have any regrets? that you didn't get to accomplish, mm. if you could do it again? Well, you know, we always have regrets, we, we do. I just felt that sometimes I couldn't do as much as I'd like to, because there was only one of me, mm. and uh, particularly when we were overseas. I did start a program in Tokyo, uh, because in each of these cases, with both Germany and, and Japan, uh, we really weren't supposed to associate with, with the local people, but I did. And I was on General MacArthur's staff, so I did get permission from him. 
And I even had a class of policemen in the university, and, and this is all voluntary, of course, but I, I did manage to get 275 women and men that were Americans that were willing to go in and as volunteers in the various schools because their schools were, were bombed. And, Devastated. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, but I, I still remember that for me, this is one of the great experiences from it, but I kept thinking, ah, oh, if I could just be, more. if I could do more, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, but I did it, every, I actually did it in uh, Tsuta College and Daihachi Girls School for, for five days, I would do this. And then my husband was always in a position where I needed to be social at night. So <laughs> I did my doctorate, actually finally getting in the university, it took me forever. And I was the only woman and I was the only American. And uh, even the paper, I said, I was looking at a scrapbook this week because I don't keep scrapbooks. And, and uh, fortunately, my husband's secretary had done it. But there was this, this article about um, two people that were from other countries, and the other one was from Colombia, and then I was th the woman. And it said under it, these two foreigners are here and we hear their fascinating languages. Oh, and wow. I kept thinking, my goodness, <laughs> fascinating That's their language. <laughs> yes. Wow. Can I ask a question, quick question? You mentioned crying before that you went home in tears. Yes. And as women, professional women, we are told it is so taboo. Do not let anyone ever see you cry or show emotion in a, in a boardroom or in a, in, a, in a professional setting. What are your thoughts on that? And, and is there one bit of advice that you could give to women that either we should be doing or we should stop doing while trying to get ahead? I think if you're enthusiastic and you, you're passionate about what you want to do. You're going to find that these things come naturally. Now, as far as crying, I don't think I ever did cry in front of anybody, but I, I will say I probably felt like it in, mm -hmm. in different times. Mm -hmm. But with my husband was very understanding. He was older and much wiser, and he, he accepted it. But it's interesting. Every country I went to, and we lived in the three different countries before with hair, but I found there were nice people everywhere and I'm a positive thinker. I teach it. I talk about it all the time. And when I, I hear people talking about the body, it's so important to keep our bodies. But I also say, it's what's up here. I'm, na I'm 98, and I want to keep that. I want to be able to do that. Yeah. So far, so good. <laughs> yeah. Mayo, Mayo scans me and said I had a brain, a 35-year-old brain. And I said, what can you do about my body? <laughs> <laughs> Next. That was good. Yeah. That was good. Obviously, education is totally different from what it was way back then to what it is now. So, what are your thoughts about the, about education? Do we think, do you think that we're on the right track, or what are your thoughts on this whole new education thing that's going on now? That's a good question because we are in the midst uh, of the past and the present. I'm always looking forward. Uh, I don't look at the past very much, but I do say that when I found out they weren't going to teach penmanship anymore and that you're going to only do uh, printing and not longhand, I saw some things that were happening with the English language which did bother me, absolutely. I agree. And of course I'm around, the, the people I see the most are 18 to 21 year olds and uh, they keep me, believe me, they keep me alive too. <laughs> Wow. So what do you contribute? You know, you mentioned you're 98 and you look absolutely great. What do you contribute to looking this fabulous at your age? That's really a nice compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's we true. all want you to know. Yes. Come yes. on. We're flattering you, but we would actually like to know. I know people that is half your age that doesn't look as good as you. I wish I'd come here before. <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome to come back anytime you like. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> well, actually, I do think working has made a difference because you, when you keep this alive, then you're mm -hmm. concerned about your, your body. You want, you want to be able to do these things. But I, my, my whole philosophy really with, with is life isn't about me, life is about others. And you will find when you move into that whole vast place that, we could, that everybody could be doing and should be doing, you'll find out, oh, it's exciting, I'm happy, I'm, I'm doing something I'm for active. somebody else. <laughs> yes, and it makes all the difference in the world. I've had it with students over the years. I tell them, they're, they come back to me and they say, oh, you were so right, you really, we, we need to do that. Yes, because 
at Christmas time, I get about 2,000 Christmas cards. And I cannot, well, I, I've been associated with 16,000 students. <laughs> yes, so. yes. <laughs> But I feel terrible that I can't answer them yeah. uh, because I want, to, I want them to know how much I appreciate it. But I think for, uh, for everybody with education, it is so imperative now that we put more emphasis on it, that we really see it's the direction the world's going. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's terribly important. Uh, having seen it in, in the different countries that we lived was very educational for me because even with, even with my degrees, various degrees, believe me, what you, that's nothing compared to what you see with people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have about one minute left, so we want to find out what's next for you. What does Dr. Kinney have on her calendar coming up in the next year or so? Well, <laughs> you see, between Jacksonville University and Mayo Clinic, it keeps me pretty good. <laughs> 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 but, She's um, looking forward. <laughs> but I'm, always, I'm always thinking of, the, of, of what we can do to make the world better. This is what I say. For example, Tim Cost, who's our president at JU, Love him. was one of my students. And, and I have a picture on the wall of my handing him his diploma. And what was I saying to him? Somebody said, well, this is what you say to every graduate. But I said to him, go out into the world and make the world a better place in which to live. And that is what you're focused on, as Correct. always. Dr. Kinney, thank you so much for being here. Wonderful. So, and please, we truly do mean it. Come back anytime. Yeah, absolutely. We would love to have oh, you. You're very gracious. You all are. Thank you. You're, you are as You're well. delightful, oh, really. Oh, thank you. Right back at you. <laughs> all right, coming up next on the chat, the owners of Mother Truck and Food Truck. I can't believe I have to say that in front of Dr. Kinney, but it's catchy. See their signature dish they're cooking up next. Stay with us.